can correcting scoliosis make you taller? When we look at the basic anatomy of the spine, we understand the spine consists of vertebra that is stacked one on top of each other, kind of like circles or, 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 or blocks stacked upon each other in three main sections of the spine, the cervical spine being the neck, the thoracic spine being the middle back, and the lumbar spine being in the, in the low back. These vertebras are separated by something called discs. So you imagine a block, and then a cushion, and then a block, and then a cushion, because discs are kind of like, like cushions. And the total height of the spine is actually dictated by the alignment and also the size of the vertebra and the discs. Now, when we look at the anatomy of the spine, we understand that the, the, the spine does have natural curves, but the curves are designed to be from the side. The side views in the neck, in the mid-back, and the low back are designed to deal with compressive forces, make the spine flexible, help distribute stress, and also deal with protecting the spinal cord and nerves. And if the spinal curvatures are in place, the vertebra are very in, in a very natural position. Also from the spine, the spine should be completely straight from the front. There should be no curves in the, in the front part of the spine. Then these curvatures are something that we call scoliosis, and those curvatures can actually misalign the spine not only from from the front, but it also misaligned the spine from the, from the side. When the spine's in complete straight alignment this way, and it also has the normal alignment from the side, this alignment leads to maximum vertical trunk height, meaning that the distance from the sacrum and the skull is at its ideal level. Now, discs play an important role also, not just alignment, because the disc also take up some of the space, meaning you have the vertebra and then you have a disc and you have a vertebra and you have a disc. So if these discs become deteriorated, they also can affect the height. So we look at alignment and we look at disc deterioration, which can also affect the height of the, uh, or the length of the spine, which can affect the height of your body. Now we know the discs unfortunately can become deteriorated and thinner as a result of misalignment of lifestyle issues and deterioration. So if discs lose height, they can not only change the shape in the height of your spine, but they can also change the shape of your spine as well, leading to curvatures which decrease vertical height. So when we look at scoliosis, how does it affect your spine and your height? But well, we know scoliosis can cause decrease length of the spinal of the spine because as curves start to occur it decreases the length of the spine therefore making your body look shorter than normal. So scoliosis doesn't not make you taller, it actually makes your trunk seem smaller than normal. In fact, most patients with scoliosis look that they have a relatively short trunk relative to their arms and legs. So as these spinal curvatures get bigger and they get and, and they cause more more curve to develop, they can they can affect the person's posture and their ability to stand long and tall. In fact, the main symptom of scoliosis in children is this is a postural problem, is deviation in their torso and the shape of their torso, poor posture, posture changes. We're looking at their ability to stand properly, shoulder balance, waist asymmetry, rib deformity. All these postural findings is by far the number one thing that we see in scoliosis in children. Now, also, it can, since scoliosis is progressive in nature, meaning curves progress, that if you have a small scoliosis, it may not be affecting your height at that moment, but as your curves get bigger, it can start affecting your height. Now we see with adult cases, as these K as these conditions or the scoliosis progresses from mild to moderate to severe, as these cases get more severe, we see adult cases come in with, they're saying that we've lost two or three inches of height and they have very documented history. They remember themselves being 5'5", five five, and now they're 5'2", or they're 5'8", and now they're 5'5". Five five. They notice they use three or four inches. I've seen patients do five or six inches of height over a period of an adolescent to late stage life because as these curves become bigger and the discs become degenerated as a result of the scoliosis. So a scoliosis is diagnosed and mild may not be affecting your height that much, but as it's left untreated and it goes and becomes more severe, it's more likely. And then the, as this curve is causing more unnatural, uneven forces to occur in the body, it's more likely to cause degeneration to the discs. So now we're affecting the height at two levels, not only as the curve's getting bigger, but also as the discs are degenerating. So it tends to change height even greater. So we know that this starts to occur, we're more likely to see more significant height changes.
We know scoliosis can affect height differently because scoliosis can have different types of causations, meaning we know there's idiopathic scoliosis where there's no associated cause, which is the most common type and the one I was referring to mostly. But we know there's other types of scoliosis as well. And one is called neuromuscular scoliosis. Now in neuromuscular conditions, the patient can have an underlying neuromuscular condition that could affect their height as well. Um, something like Marfan syndrome is known where patients can have increased long bone length, like where their, their arms and legs become become longer than normal, they tend to become very, very tall. So these types of patients, even though they have scoliosis, are taller than average because they're a neuromuscular condition. In degenerative scoliosis, we tend to see decreased height because the spine is deteriorating and degenerating. In congenital scoliosis, there's asymmetrical development of vertebra in utero. And since the bones aren't developing properly in utero, the person's born with scoliosis, this can affect the height of the torso because the bones aren't developing properly. And as a result of this abnormal development of the vertebra in utero, it affects the overall length of the spine. So to sum up what I was saying is that scoliosis can affect height in several different ways. Number one is by alignment, that the bigger the curves are, the more it decreases the height. As the curve stays there, it causes the disc to deteriorate. Disc degeneration can decrease height. So the most common thing you see is decreased height associate, associated with scoliosis. And the last type is because of congenital scoliosis can cause the asymmetrical development of the vertebra, which can cause a decreased height in torso. The only thing that can negate those things would be some type of underlying neuromuscular condition that increases bone growth and bone development, something like Marfan syndrome that can have, yeah, the person can have scoliosis and actually have an increased height relative to normal because the increase of bone growth and bone, uh, bone length uh, development. So the majority of time, we're gonna see decreased height associated with scoliosis only with the underlying neuromuscular condition is we see an, an increased height. Now the bottom line is if you have scoliosis, and you're an adult and you're seeing a decreased height. If, if you're an adolescent, you don't have scoliosis and you're seeing decreased height. Decreased height is normally a sign of scoliosis progression. So that's what I think is what's most important. There's really never a reason why you should be decreasing in height unless your curve is worsening. And if your curve is worsening, that's a sign that you want to take care of your scoliosis because as curves get bigger, they're harder to treat and they cause more problems. So as you see a decrease with height, you want to be more proactive in reducing, a, uh, reducing the curve or minimally have it evaluated to see if the curve has changed over time. If you're seeing a decrease in height and you're seeing scoliosis progression, the unfortunate news is that the curve will continue to progress over time. So you want to intervene and reduce the curve. And as you reduce the curve, you can actually restore or some height that was lost, and the sooner you actually reduce it, the more likely you are to Im improve or regain some height that we have lost as a result of the scoliosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.